Uh, hold on a second. Where is um, – I need some light. Oh. There we go. We need a lot of light, Icy. Hey, uh, wait a minute. That's okay. I got to turn the volume up. Hold on. Speak. Hello, hello. Okay. Hey, Are you comfortable there, Epstein? Jesus. Very, very, <laughs> very comfortable. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Like, talk, talk, about, talk about comfort there. <laughs> Unbelievable. I'm busting my tuchas, and he's sitting there laying in the bed. <laughs> um, I don't even look decent. Okay, we're starting the show now. Okay, I got, the, I got the drum, so I'm ready to go. Very good. Okay, here we are. The Rebbe taught the Hasidim to sing the French national anthem, the Marseillaise. It's a famous song. It's the very uh, 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 upbeat march that was sung in the Humphrey Bogart movie. What was the name of that movie? A famous movie. Anyway, by the end of it, they beat the Nazis by everybody singing that song. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sending an email to somebody while I'm talking to you. Hold, hold on for a second. Humphrey Bogart? Which movie was oh, that? Uh, yeah, you know, the famous Humphrey Bogart movie. Um, Casablanca? Casablanca? Casablanca, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mendel, you want to sing for the people that nigger? Yeah, let's, 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 let's sing that nigger. Can you hear the drums? Yeah, I can. Let me hear. Are we allowed to have drums? Yeah, we hear them. Okay. They're just his desk drum. It's what? Your desk drum or drum drum? Yeah, I mean, I can, I can, if it's better like this, I can hold it up here if you want. Whatever. Are we allowed to have drums in the sphere is the question. That's your call. Oh. Huh? Yeah, it's up to you. I don't know. It's... Uh, what do you want okay, me to do? You can use this desk if not. Huh? Does a desk count as drums? Uh, I don't know. You can hit the desk, right? Okay, so I'm going to put this away. Hit the, use, no, uh, whatever use the you desk think. as your drum. Then we're good. How's this? So at that time, when the Rebbe taught that tune to us, when he taught that nigga, okay. he told. Ah. He told how when Napoleon invaded Russia, the Alta Rebbe asked the Hasidim to find out the tune the French army marched to. When the Hasidim came back and they sang the tune for the Alta Rebbe, he entered a state of deep concentration. Finally, he said, that's a victory march. Therefore, since the Hasidim sang that song, the power of that song, the evil of Napoleon was turned over to good. And the Alter Rebbe said, therefore, finally, we will be victorious. Diva Nata. Ay, 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 did I? Let's sing that song. Let's sing Napoleon's Victory March for everybody. Oh, oh. I believe he could. All right. <laughs> Napoleon's Victory. Hey, did you, <laughs> did you know Napoleon's Victory March the song? Yeah, 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 yeah,
Beautiful. Okay, her stop yawning. Hey, Mr. Half a Face, where's the rest of your face? <laughs> that's part of the show. There we go. Drew, that's better. Remember to see them singing that song. <laughs> Napoleon's victory march became a victory. I'm relocating to the food. The yeah, yeah, yeah. You bringing some over? <laughs> As bringing over from the other side, from the side of evil into the side of holiness. And the Rebbe says that with that, the Alter Rebbe opens a channel that in our generation, we are able to accomplish that by turning over the bad side into good. Remember, you're drinking the beer on the screen. No, actually, you can only see you. They didn't know that until you said that. Not sure, I see everybody. That's not in the recording. <laughs> okay, fine. Sorry. Only the main screen is there. So, oh, we'll have to edit that part out. <laughs> all right. Okay. So the Alta Rebbe opened up a channel that the Rebbe then will be able in our generation to open up the tomb to give strength to the other side that when the Hasidim sing it, then it will become a tomb of holiness. And the Rebbe told us to sing it with a prayer that was set up in the chronology of the Aleph base by Kwaderes or Amuna. So let's sing it with the words. Kwaderes Hey, <laughs> Beautiful. And the last week, there was only one chair. If you'll be able to do more chairs, more people could share the show. Okay. Now, there are two points about Hasidus that I would like to bring out. One of them is like we said, that the Alphabeti caused a revolution that you don't need to have a lofty soul and you don't have to do a whole bunch of fasting and rolling around in the snow. It's possible to internalize the comprehension of godliness through the intellect. That's one point I wanted to point out. 
you can understand godliness through the intellect, through wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. The second point I want to mention is that the essence of Hasidus is a revelation and a relationship with the living God. It's a new drawdown from the inner level of the godly crown all the way up to the ancient, all the way up to the infinite one. His bonanos, which means the contemplation of godliness through the intellect, is understanding and comprehension of the workings of the king from whose word, his word means his name, all existence is enlivened and brought into being. Everything that we know, the stars in the heavens and the people on the earth and fire and air and water are all brought into being from Hashem's name, from the letters of his feet. And when godliness is understood at first, we realize it to be a very rarefied, elegant, sophisticated and at the same time simple intellectual exercise. But finally, we realize it's much more than that. It's not just an amazing, fascinating intellectual exercise. It's actually a godly intellect. It's Hashem that's dressed in all of those levels of intellectual understanding. Wow. That's the first level I want to bring out about Hasidus. The second one, which is even higher and more essential, is the essence of Hasidus is a revelation and relationship with the living God. These two are intimately connected. Because the way of connecting to Hashem is through the service of the intellect. That's how you connect to the living God, through the service of the intellect. That's how the revolution that he caused. The contemplation of godliness. Now, one of the new things that Hasidus brought to the world is that a person is able to change his nature. Really? From a self-serving nature to a God-serving nature. The previous Rebbe explains this process. He explains that there are, every Jew has three souls. Up till now, we knew that every Jew had two souls. He had a godly soul and an animal soul. Now the previous Rebbe comes and tells us we really have three souls. And it's really in Tanya, it's mentioned in Tanya, but it's not uh, uh, elaborated. The problem is that the godly soul is going up continuously. It only wants to be nullified in godliness. It doesn't want nothing to do with the world. Like a candle is trying to go up at a wick. And once it does, it won't be a flame anymore. And the soul doesn't care. It wants to go out of itself to be included in godliness. The animal soul, on the other hand, only goes down into worldly appetite. It has appetites and desires it wants to fulfill like an animal. The third soul, which is called the nefesh sikhli, the intellectual soul, connects these two opposites. The godly soul also needs a connector to Hashem because Hashem is infinite. The godly soul is the creation. And the soul is giving a, given a garment in the storehouse of souls through which to perceive godliness. Without that garment, it couldn't perceive godliness because godliness is too far removed and separate. Also, Adam Rishon, the first man, was given that same garment. It was called a garment of light through which he could perceive the Shekhinah. And it was called a katnus or 
Or means light. Aleph spelled Aleph Bavri. It was a garment of light that the first man had to be able to connect with the skin. Now, after Adam Arishon did the sin, the Aleph and the word light and the word or changed to an iron. And now it became a garment of leather, a thick blocking. And that garment of leather, leather surrounded Adam and Chava, Adam and Eve, from the top of their head to under their feet. Why? To protect them, hi Marvin, to protect them from being swallowed up by the opposite of godliness, Marvin, in the world to which he is being banished. So the mixed up letters, the Aleph changed to the Ayin, became a garment, and it's called the garment of Noga, and it's called human intellect. The Nephes are simply the intellectual soul. Mr. Krieger, I'm in the middle of doing the show. I'll give you a call after. Hi, Mr. Krieger. You want me to send you a link? <laughs> that, that was Mr. Krieger. He told me to learn every day. I make the phone ring in the middle of the show. L'chaia, <laughs> <laughs> Marvin. Now, when Adam Marisha went out of the garden, he had this garment of leather, which is called Noga, which means our human intellect. And it's called the Nefesh Asikli, the intellectual soul. Now, when the three unholy clippers, when the three unholy aspects cling to that intellectual soul, they get nurtured from it, and that's called the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Our godly soul does not come down to this world to be fixed up. After all, its descent, before it came down, it was constantly bonded to Hashem and nurtured by revealed godliness. How? Through the garment of life is that. So why should it come down here? It comes down here to purify and rectify our animal soul. And the portion of the world designated as the responsibility of that soul. The garment, the nefesh of sikhli, the human intellect, the intellectual soul, is necessary because the godly soul and the animal soul are complete opposites. And they move in not, not only their opposite, they move in opposite directions. Therefore, they need a connector, which is this intellectual soul, human intelligence, the level called Noga, the garment of leather. And here is where the service of changing the nature of the attributes comes in. The garment and leather of, of leather does not perceive godliness. It's human intelligence. It has its own nature of being concerned with its own existence. It's part of Noga. Although it's the highest level of Noga, it's the Chabad of Noga, it's the intellect of Noga. For example, I'm going to eat healthy so that I live long. Everything it does is connected with itself and then with its own existence. I am going to comply with social rec uh, uh, regulations and laws because it's good to live in peace and happiness and prosperity with others. It's concerned with the world it perceives. To change its nature, the godly soul reveals to it the greatness and truth of Hashem through the teachings of Hasidus, for example. To eat healthy in order to serve 
Hashem better, for example. Like we said, the intelligent soul is the higher part of Nova. It in turn connects the animal soul, which is the lower part of Noga, which is the emotional attributes of Noga, to refine it, to refine it, to explaining to it on its level how its whole existence and vitality is Hashem. And therefore, to use its considerable powers to serve Hashem. And with that strength, it raises the godly soul, this intellectual soul, turning over the animal soul, the animal soul raises the godly soul to greater heights than before its descent. And more important, that process gives Hashem not. On the other side of the coin, we also change the nature of the godly soul. Why and how would you change the nature of the godly soul? The nature of the godly soul is to ascend, to be unified and nullified in godliness. And we change this nature to be able to come down to the world and deal with the intellectual soul and the animal soul in order to accomplish that Hashem to get not. Purify the world. Remember, you have some... Uh, you're going to, ay, Marvin. <laughs> Bitsalil, you got to help me. I'm happy to help you, Marvin. How can I help you? You, you need to bring Mashiach now because it's not fair. Why isn't it fair, Marvin? Oh, oh. <laughs> oh I'll tell you why. Because... <laughs> because this whole COVID-19 thing, and people are sitting at home and getting unemployment from their government. In the meantime, I'm still working full time. Hey, I want to take a break too. You think I like making people do Averos? <laughs> no, I understand, Marvin. You're very conflicted. I understand. And I have Rachmanis on you. Yeah, you need to bring Mashiach now, B'Tzalel. As a matter of fact, Amen. I have a friend who's a Jungian analyst. I'm going to Emir Tashem. I'm going to call him up this week. And I'm going to tell him that you have a problem, that you're conflicted. Why? Because on the one hand, you have to incite people to go against Hashem. And you have to do it because you're working for the king. That's your job. That's my job, it's all On the other hand, everybody's always yelling at you. And telling you, hey, get out of here with your bad advice. And really, you don't want the people to do bad. You want them to do good. It's just that you have this job for the king to try to get them to do bad. If I was in your position, Marvin, I don't know what I would do. I don't know how you handle it. Well, Bitsalio, the truth is I was going to quit this job a long time ago, but my okay. wife won't let me. Oh. How about a joke song, Bitsalil, to cheer me up? Oh, I can try. The last time I tried a joke song in this Zoom, it sounded like real bad. <laughs> ah, we like bad. Go for it. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right. If the the microphone is Moshka. And I was a duck. I swam to the bottom and I'm never coming. Tell me how long do I have to wait? Can I get my out now? Almost has a day. The mech would not master. And I'm not a duck when I swam to the bottom. And I'll never come up. How, so. how long do I have to wait? Can, Can I get my out now? now? Almost uh, has a day. Avister, Avister, I ain't lying. The people down here that yeah. tell me how long do I have do to wait? have to wait? Can, Can I get my sheath now? Almost I hesitate. That wasn't half bad. That was good. Thanks, Marvin. Thank you. That was good. Wait. 
You know, Mendel likes scat singing, so let's try that. Da 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 pa da da da. Da 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 pa pa da. Da 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 pa pa. Da 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 pa pa da pa 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 we're going to have some fun. We're going to have some fun. Gonna ain't seen nothing like, then like the Holy One. How long? How long? Do I have to wait? Do I have to I wait? Have to get I'm going to get a shiach now. Oh, oh must I hesitate? An example. Remember we said there's two things I want to bring out about the food. One. We use our intellect to connect with them. And two, our connection is to an actual living God. It's not a theoretical concept. Through Hasidus, we can actually develop a personal relationship with Hashem, a living God. An example of how we can use our intellect to connect with God, at least through understanding, Time. And that will accomplish. No, I'm going to the animal soul, which also has a component of intellect, but its intellect is selfish. It knows if it goes to a store, all the goodies that it wants are in that store. And it knows how to get the money to buy them. It knows when it's done wrong and how to rationalize that bad action to spin it to make it sound right. And the way we use our intellect to prevail on that animal soul, we first realize that nothing makes itself. Nothing moves itself. And when we start to contemplate how this works, for example, some countries are cold, way up north. Is that me talking in the echo? Does anybody hear the echo but me? No, I just turned it off for a second. Okay. For, so some countries are cold, some are hot, some grow things, some grow other things, according to the climate and the earth chemistry. Some countries grow smart people, some grow strong people, some grow beautiful people. All according to the Mazalo, which means the constellations that are turning into heaven. And the physical and spiritual makeup of how they react to the heavenly body, the sun and the moon, and all the spiritual beings like the angels, which control everything. And each particular species, and even each particular creature is influenced and made to grow according to its particular model. One has a sweet voice. Why? Because the model to that person's voice is sweetness. And those mazalos are ultimately going up to the higher level under the influence and direction of the real angel. Right? The Mazala is spin in the heaven. So what's behind them and controlling them are the real angels. And the dregs of those real angels create the spiritual energy for the turning of the galaxies and all the myriad special turntables that turn the physical universe. And each troop of this heavenly array look up into the sky, and if you don't see much in the sky, find it on the internet, a picture of it. Each troop is composed of 10,000 times 10,000 members, and the troops are so many, you can't count them. And the real angels in turn receive their 
godly flow of godly energy from the holy animal. The face of the lion, the eagle, the bull, and the man, the spiritual source and template for all living creatures. All these receive in turn from the overflow of the fiery angels, which are called the archangels. And these archangels express their love and assault and awe by ascending three levels of realization of how exalted and elevated is Hashem from this whole heavenly and earthly choreography. They say, holy, 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 removed, removed and exalted is the Lord of hosts. And still, the whole earth is filled with his glory. And all this is from the speech decree. All of these levels are only from the speech of the king, which is hidden, called the level of Malthus, of this lowly world of action. And as far as we have ascended, we have reached only a glimmer of a gleam of a reflection of a reflection not of Hashem himself, but only of his name. How he works in enlivening and bring the creation into being. And ideally, this contemplation causes a thirst in the person who's contemplating, like fiery flames of desire to be included in God. And all of these contractions of the godly light are necessary to allow for our service of free choice. If God is revealed, we have no free choice. And that's how Hashem makes us a partner. Like it says, a person does not want to be given this piece of bread. He wants to earn it. He wants to do it on his own. He wants to do it himself. So the question is, yeah, okay, that's the nature of a person. So let Hashem create me that I would like to receive everything as a gift. The answer is that Hashem doesn't create us to get everything for free because He is allowing us to be much pia to Him. He allows us the opportunity to give Him something even though he's unlimited and he can do whatever he wants, if he brought us into an unlimited circumstance where he gives us everything, we would not have the opportunity to give him something. So he puts us in the world where he's not revealed in order that we should do something that will give him nothing. Now, the first holding back and the darkening that Hashem does is called the original contraction. But the real intention is that there should be a greater light, that light that Hashem has said, I'm not going to what we do. And in order to mollify the primordial darkness of that contraction, Hashem gave us two things. He gave us miracles and revies, righteous people. And the example is the splitting of the sea. Mendel, do you have some kind of a poem or a niggin or some kind of break for us? Yeah. Okay. There we go. We want Mashiach now. We do. Oh, look who it is. I see. Hey. How you doing? I see. Another exciting day in the Pittsburgh Cité. Oh, absolutely. Well, <laughs> we only have about five minutes left on this show. <laughs> but, uh, but I want to talk to you briefly about something very special. You know, Hoshi, this, it's a double parsha again. That's right. I, I was there, you know. I know. Yeah, I, I, I was there. Well, first of all, the sons of Aaron, they went into the they went into the Holy of Holies, and, right. and, they, and they had a little bit of L'chaim first. Now, Hoishi, I'm not one to, to speak out against L'chaim in any way, shape, or form. 
Just don't go into the Holy of Holies that way. <laughs> right. Actually, I don't know how it got affected by wine anyway, because, you know, I can drink a ton of wine. It has no effect on me. But, oh, uh, I, oh, I was I was there, Hoishi. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm just saying. I mean, if they had a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, single malt scotch, I could see it having a slight effect, even though it doesn't have an effect on me. It could have an effect on them. Maybe. <laughs> well, well, they... Well, they it, was, it was spiritual wine, her. <laughs> Anyways, and this parsha after that is a very amazing thing because then there was also, you know, it goes into the avoider of, of Yom Kippur, which was a very, one second. Right, oh, shit, right. The mustache. Where'd you go? Uh -huh. oh, you go. Mustache fixed. You wanted to get a haircut. Anyways, the avoider from Yom Kippur is talked about in this parsha, which is an amazing thing. It talks about all the different things that the, and the carbon that they would bring. The one would would get thrown off the cliff, right? And one for Hashem and one one for Azazel. Right. But really, that's the first part. That's Acher Aimeis. But I really want to talk about the Gedoshim. It's something interesting. Because in Gedoshim is the thing, right, where it says, And you should love your fellow as yourself. Right. And and of course, we know this is connected so much with this time because during Svira is when Rabbi Akiva's students they was getting from from something like a COVID nineteen they was dying left and right, right. And and basically it's because because they were the students of Rabbi Akiva they should have known to have a better obviously slow they should have had more love for their fellow people. Yeah, what's up with that? I mean, that's, I always had a question about that. I mean, they're supposed to be emulating their their teacher. Well, <laughs> well maybe maybe that was the point, Taishi. Maybe the point was is that anybody else think about it. Why didn't other people was have have this this die from this? Maybe because they was the students of Rabbi Akiva, they should have known better or something. You know, because uh, everybody's got a different level. I mean, uh, look at Moshe Rabbeinu. He, he worked his whole life to get into Eretz Yisrael, and all he did was for him, actually for us, one minor thing. For him, it was a major thing. But it's amazing that that one thing kept him. From realizing his whole life's dream. Yeah, and I think he didn't complain about it. I think that's the point: is that it wasn't just that it, it wasn't because they they they're obviously sold. It was because for for the the students of Rabbi Akiva, their level wasn't what it what it needed to be. And you know, right. the important thing because because this is the thing Rabbi Akiva said, right? He said that this thing it says Miss Parsha, love your fellow as yourself. Right. It, it's the main thing in the Torah. What's interesting, too, is this is connected to the times of Mashiach, which is coming soon now, right away. And near to Hashem, it should, be, it should be immediately now. Exactly. And you know why it's connected? I'll tell you why it's connected. You know, so that I remember, there's only one letter, one piece of writing that actually is confirmed. It's confirmed. That confirmed? It's, yeah, it's confirmed to be written by, by, by the Baal Shem Tov. And this is the thing about when, when will Mashiach come? And it says when all the people of the world, they will know about Hashem because then automatically they will love each other as themselves. Yeah, I mean, the whole world right now is on standby. It's a very auspicious time. And they're all turning to Hashem and praying to Hashem and, uh, and asking Hashem to deliver them from all this uh, uh, COVID schmutz we got right now. This would be a great time. Uh, to just take them out. They're all ready to go. I mean, everybody's ready to go. You know, we can just take them all out now. Yeah, it's that time. Anyway, I think we're just about out of time here. Okay, I want to I, I wanna say the bracha and have everybody count the omer. Oh, yeah. Stay fast. Are you ready? Okay. Right, I'm going to say the bracha and everybody's going to say it after me, the omer. Hayom echod v'esrin yom shehem shalosh shvuos le'omer. No, no, no. Hayom shnayim v'esrin yom shehem shalosh shvuos v'yom echod le'omer. Shkayach. Thank you very much. Right, here's what you have to say. You have to say today is the. Thank you very much. Day of 